Welcome to my first video of a brand new series called Games Denominations Play. Are you in a denomination right now? Were you part of one previously and are no longer? Have you never been a member before? Well, regardless of your answer to those three questions, I encourage you to sit back, relax, and have a laugh at the insane games that denominations will tie themselves up in knots just so that they can win the argument over their parishioners. It doesn't matter who's right, it doesn't matter who's wrong, all it matters is the denomination comes out on top. It doesn't matter if they're Catholic, Lutheran, Eastern Orthodox, Missouri Synod, Baptist, Pentecostal. Regardless, all leadership at some point plays power plays in order to force change to happen in their congregation. It doesn't matter what kind of change, it's just changes they see fit. Other times it's going to be forcing the congregations and the members of the synod to adhere to specific guidelines or criteria that they specifically set down. But remember, it's not forced, it's compliance. And by compliance, it's compliance because they asked you to. And by asked, it's they started doing it and because you don't want to be seen as the odd one out in the group, you do it too. For today's topic, I'm going to go to the Wells Discussions Facebook group. They made a post there that I covered in a previous video. This was the post that was originally a repost from the Facebook page Liturgy Matters, and it's about the sign of the cross. To begin with, they say that the sign of the cross is a true Lutheran practice. True Lutheran practice. I'm pretty sure it's an honest to God true Catholic practice, but Lutheran practice that is a big stretch for me to buy. It's something that Catholics do together as a congregation, usually in conjunction with or started right after their priest does the sign of the cross. For Lutherans, we see the pastor do it at the start of the service and at the end of the service. And I grew up very traditional Lutheran. Those were the only two times I saw the sign of the cross during an average service, and I'm not counting a communion service here. Some of the comments below on the post, like this one from Kathy Cavella says, I'm 71, when did this become something that the Wells does and teaches? I don't see anything wrong with it, it just has never been done in any of the churches I've belonged to over my long years. That's probably what she's referring to, is that this post is implying that it's not just the pastor that does the sign of the cross, it's the congregation that's supposed to do the sign of the cross as well. When you have a post that is about the sign of the cross and then talking about teaching it, incorporating it, and encouraging the congregation to incorporate it, and then you include a picture at the bottom that shows a little girl, holding the start position for doing the sign of the cross, an average member of Wells would be confused. After all, this is something that the congregation does not do. It's something only the pastor does, twice in an average service. Someone else commented on Kathy's post asking if she never saw her pastor do it, but as she explained, that's not what she meant. Alan Lubick's response to Kathy says that pretty much every edition of the small catechism has an instruction by Luther that says make the sign of the Holy Cross before praying. However, unless it's a Wells edition, in which case the Wells does not include that in their edition. How true that is, I do not know. For the Wells to leave something like that, out of their printing of the small catechism is interesting. But I also have to question why they don't also teach it. It's one thing to include it or leave it out of the small catechism, 
but they've never taught it in any catechism class, at least not back when I went through catechism, and I don't know anyone else who went through catechism. If they were taught something similar or not, you got another commenter by the name of Carol Bednarek, who says, question mark, question mark, question mark, I'm confused on this one. Alan says in response, What way are you confused? The sign of the cross is a wonderful reminder of our baptism and the life we have been baptized into, and the post encourages pastors to follow Luther's advice in the small catechism and teach the congregation a beneficial practice. Alan, 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 you know, or I'm pretty sure you know why Carol is confused. You could have left the original post as just that one question. What way are you confused? You did not have to add the rest of the words you put in that post. I don't know if you are dense or if you are really trying hard to hype up this new Lutheran practice. And I'm saying new Lutheran practice because as the rest of the comments point out, it is pretty much clear to everybody's mind that it is a Catholic practice since none of the other commenters have practiced crossing themselves in this lifetime. For the one or two oddballs who did comment and say that they're the ones who cross themselves, they acknowledge that they are the only ones in the congregation that do that. Which is fine. No shame to them. You do what you want to do. However, I'm pointing out that Alan could have responded much more succinctly if he had just left it at that question. Instead, with the rest of the words he used for his answer, he's indirectly implying that Carol may or may not have something against the cross and the sign of the cross and its reminder and Luther's advice in the small catechism. Carol's response to Alan reads as follows. True, but I've never nor have parishioners practiced the sign of the cross on themselves. I went to a Wells grade school and high school and we never did this. Is this something new that is being adapted? Alan's response to Carol goes as follows, saying, I would prefer to say that it is something very old that part of Lutheranism was ignoring, and then doing a little spiel about how his dad was born in the 30s, and the small catechism that was printed then clearly instructs making the sign of the cross before evening and morning prayer, and it's been there long before the 40s. Which, okay, I understand that the Wells used to do something along this line. However, they no longer teach it. So why are we trying to make it a denomination-wide practice now? The funniest exchange happens between Candace Butzloff and Alan. Candace says, Alan, it also reminds many, myself included, of the, quote, Catholic tradition of this act. It also reminds me of the many other things like the papacy, saint worship, Mary worship, etc. This particular act of crossing oneself may not be wrong, but I would still contend it is a Catholic tradition, and why do we as wells need to adopt this? What's next? Question mark, question mark. Holy water, paid candle lighting, etc. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. A lot of question marks. Alan's response to her is, so let's see, do you have candles in your church? Is that a Catholic tradition? He misspells Catholic as Catholic. Pews, organ. Your implication, wrong your, that making the sign of the cross is merely Catholic because Catholics do it is irrational. The sign of the cross was around even before the Roman Catholic Church existed, done by Lutheran Catholics, Episcopalians, and some Baptists and Presbyterians to confess their Christian faith. It amuses me then some in Wells defend raising and waving their hands in the air looking like the charismatic or Pentecostal, but have a meltdown at the sign of the cross, which is in our own Lutheran catechism. <laughs> oh, Alan. Alan, Alan, Alan. You're conflating people choosing to engage in their own Christian expression and worship with something that is being encouraged as a synod-wide change in practice 
There is a difference between the two of them. Personal expression during worship is usually recognized as a place of adiaphora, and it's up to each person to do as they see fit. And I believe only exceptions to that would be if they're disrupting church worship in doing so. However, if the Synod is trying to make a denomination-wide change in how they encourage their members to worship before church, after church, during church, that is no longer a personal Christian expression during worship. That is a Synod-wide, quote, encouragement, unquote, which is really just low-key telling you that this is how you need to change your style of worship. Candace's retort is amazing, though. She says, no meltdown and not irrational either. I clearly hear, here is in all caps, all your rationale for using it, but it doesn't make it correct either. Seems like most Wells churches agree. Exclamation, exclamation. Alan's response to her is going in depth to the claim that Wells agrees with the Book of Concord and then saying that the Wells does not contradict the Book of Concord and recognizes certain a uh, certain practice as universal but adiaphora and then he's suggesting to her that she needs to reconsider her misunderstanding where exactly the Wells agrees and disagrees in terms of religious practice. That's the thing, Alan. Candace clearly said that most Wells churches agree with her on the sign of the cross. Most Wells churches currently agree that if you were to use it as a congregant, that definitely seems like a traditional Catholic practice that you're doing which wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't for the fact that Wells styles itself as a very not Catholic denomination. To try to reintroduce a practice that, if what you say is true, has been around since the 40s, it's just been ignored probably since the 40s, the original post should include a longer and more descriptive message. It needs to include the pertinent details about how long of a Lutheran practice it's been and that it used to be practiced widely up until, you know, a certain decade, or at least it was widely known to be printed in the catechism up until a certain decade and then it was removed after that and that's why we think it's a Catholic practice. But none of that information is in there. Not in the original post. You have to dig into the comment section to find anything that's remotely related to that information. No, the original post is basically saying, Wells, we are going to change to a more Catholic style tradition. I know you're wondering why we're doing this, but we're not going to tell you. You will have to do the research on your own, and then we will gatekeep whether or not that research that you did is correct or not which you won't know until you post in the comments section, and then we can correct you. Also keep in mind that I have not seen, as of this video posting, any link or citation that demonstrates evidence to one or the other. It does make me want to dig out my small catechism again, though. Again, if the Synod wants to issue that change, that's fine but they need to include the rationale behind making that change, not acting as if everyone reacting to that change are insane lunatics. And that concludes the first episode of Games Denominations Play. Please like, subscribe, share, leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.